I'm going to show you how to solve any DC steady state circuit. And we're not going to use KVL. And we're not going to use KCL. Well, we are going to use KCL, but we're going to use it in a roundabout way. Uh, these two tools are pretty handy with simple little circuits. But as soon as anything gets kind of complicated, they become more hassle than they're worth. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using MNA, Modified Nodal Analysis. Here are the steps to solve a circuit with modified nodal analysis. Step number one, label all intersections. These are called nodes. And a node is pretty much an intersection where the voltage is the same anywhere. So this here, that's a node. This here, that's a node. Node, node. See what I mean? This here, not a node. There's no, there's no intersection. Two, we're going to pick a reference node. Now, voltages aren't like temperatures. They're only relative, right? So eventually you'll learn to pick references or grounds that make the math easier, make the circuit easier to solve. But we're just going to pick one kind of a random. Uh, let's say this one here. That might not be the best place to put it, but the math's going to be pretty much the same regardless. Three, simplify capacitors and inductors. Now MNA is very powerful. You can use it with AC signals, you can use it with amplifiers, you can use it with transistors, you can use it with transformers, a whole, whole bunch of stuff that you can't really use KVL or KCL with. But in this case we're using DC which means capacitors they just become open circuits and inductors well they just become short circuits. Brakes and wires. So let's simplify the circuit a little bit. See this inductor right here? It's not an inductor. This circuit's been sitting like this for a long time. That's what I mean when I say steady state. So what it is, it's just a wire. This capacitor up here, that's not a capacitor anymore. It's been sitting here for a while. So this right here is actually just an open circuit, just an open switch, which means that there's no current flowing through here. This capacitor down here, yeah, it's not a capacitor either. It's just an open circuit. There's no current going through there. So really, you can even simplify this quite a bit by going, there's nothing there. And it doesn't matter that there's a resistor here because this is just a big open circuit. Looks like that. So what's this resistor doing? It's not doing anything. It's gone. So boom, look at that. Now we have three nodes left. Nope, I lied. Now we have four nodes left. And this node goes all the way up here. Step number four. Pick current directions. Now these are arbitrary because if I decide, hey, yeah, this current's probably going in this direction, and it turns out in real life it was coming this direction, I'm just gonna get a negative number. So pick them however you want. I'm not even thinking about it. Pick them however you want. And if it's going that way, this way, it's going this way, that way. And let's say it's going that way. That one's gonna be negative for sure. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. So five, apply KCL to each node, except, this is a big except, reference node. So again, we said, yeah, our ground's right here. Doesn't matter. That's not a node anymore. That's just a reference. Everything right here is five, excuse me, everything right here is zero volts. That means it's not that interesting. Zero volts. Now, I'm going to label these. So this is going to be V1, this is going to be V2, this is going to be V3. So, I know you're thinking, hey, you said we weren't going to be doing KCL. It's crossed out right there. Well, that's true, but I lied. So, what I mean when we say we're not we're not doing KCL is we're, I'm not going to go, okay, this is current 1, this is current 2, this is current 3. And that 1 equals 2 plus 3. No, I'm not doing that. Instead, using our handy dandy old friend Ohm's law, we're going to represent our currents as voltages over resistances. So for every current, we're going to represent that as the voltage of the origin minus the voltage, oops, minus the voltage of the destination plus or minus a source, if there's a source on that branch. This is an optional. Over the resistance of the branch. 
So we're not actually going to represent things in currents, except in the case where there isn't a resistance in the branch. So you see this, this branch right here? There's no resistance anywhere. So in that case, we're, we're going to have to do something funky, and I'll show you that in a second. Let's go through an example. Let's start with V2 because it's easy. So V2 is this node right here. Now the current coming in is this current right here and this current right here. So let's add those up. So this current is represented by the voltage of the origin, V3, minus the voltage of the destination, V2, divided by the resistance of the branch, 3 ohms. This current is the voltage of the origin, minus the voltage of the destination, over the resistance of the branch, 6 ohms. And all that current coming in must be going out. So that equals the voltage of the origin, V2 minus the voltage of the de destination, 0 volts in this case, over the resistance of the branch, 2. And that's our first equation. And you need an equation like this for each and every node. So let's do one for V3. It's going to be a good example. So this current is coming in, and these two currents are going out. So let's start with the current going in. The current going in is the voltage of the origin, 0 volts, because it's coming from over here. It's coming from way over here. We're going from 0 to V3. So voltage of the origin minus voltage of the destination, V3, plus or minus a source if there's a longest source. So right here, there's a 10-volt source. And you can see the positive is where the current's coming out of. So that means it's helping out the current. It's pushing the current. So that's plus 10 volts. If the polarity of this was opposite, if this was plus and this was minus, we'd be going minus 10 volts, but we're not. All over the resistance of the branch, 1 ohm. So that current coming in equals this current and this current. So this current right here, that equals V3 minus V2 all over 3. Look familiar? That's because we used it over here as well because we're talking about that current. The other current coming out is this one here. So that's V3 minus V1, the destination voltage, over the, the resistance of the branch. So that's 4 ohms plus 5 ohms. You notice before, I'm do, before I started this, I wasn't doing any simplifying. I wasn't going, oh, well, these are in parallel. I can merge those, and these are in series. I can merge those. No, because we want to know the voltage at every branch and using that we can solve the current at every branch. If you simplify the whole circuit you're not going to be able to know where everything is everywhere because you've simplified it away. And now let's do the first node. So this is a little bit more complicated but it's actually not that bad. So the current going in is this current here V3 minus V1 all over 4 plus 5, and that equals this current coming out, so V1 minus V2 all over 6, and this current. Now, you're looking at this current and you're saying, okay, yeah, that's fine, but if you tried to do that, you go, okay, V1 minus 0 volts minus 3 volts all over the resistance of the branch, but there's no resistance in the branch. So what are you going to do? Well, you don't do anything. You say, all right, this is just going to be eye source. We can't describe the voltage. We can't describe the current like that, so we're just going to call that eye source. And the problem is, is that what that does is it adds a fourth variable, and we only have three equations right now, right? So we got to add one more equation, but this little branch with only the voltage source gives us one more equation because we know that V1 is... 0 volts plus 3 volts. And that's our fourth equation. So now we have four equations and four unknowns, and I'm going to solve that using my handy dandy HP50G. So we have V3 minus V2 all over 3 plus V1 minus V2 all over 6. And those equal V2 minus 0 over 2. Equation 1. Four equations, four unknowns. So let's put this into an array. 
and then we'll put our unknowns into an array. V1, V2, V3, I, S. And we're going to go symbolic self, linear self. There you go. And now we know that V1, that's 3 volts, which we can I can tell just by looking at it. And V2 is 3.125 volts. V3 is 7.875 volts. And IS is 562 milliamps. Now, let's just confirm that what we've done is correct by modeling it. So we said V1 was 3 volts, which your simulation agrees with. We said V2 was 3.125 volts, which our simulation agrees with. We said that V3 was 7.875 volts, and we said that the current through this branch was 562.5 milliamps. So there you go. It works.